freeze cold. This still is, snow is not bad at all. This is just light stuff. So once it gets cold like this, I can just basically sweep it off and continue working. It's just so when it gets warm and heavy and packs and sticks to everything, that it's an issue. But yeah, see, so just just sweep it off and go. Not a big deal at all. It's what December. 20th today, I think. So, is it? No, 21st, because Kelly was yesterday. So, first day of winter today. So we should get cold enough temperatures, and they should stay cold enough for me to get the cabin walls finished and get up on the roof. So hopefully, we do, we do tend to get some warm spells, especially in January. We usually, get a week of melting so I might need to do some snow clearing by then but hopefully at that point I'm over already I've already used most of the logs I'm going to get above the walls. Callie where are you? Callie come here. Don't want her going back. Where those wolves are but she's got a squirrel cornered and she's focused on it which is right near where she saw the where the wolf saw her and she saw the wolf Callie shorter sections uh, people ask me on a lot I think on the last video one of the videos anyway why I'm putting the windows in this way like fitting them and then trying to work the logs around it and that is the reason that log is probably less than 100 pounds on that size which means that middle one is probably less than 200 pounds yeah probably quite, maybe even quite a bit less and then the one on the far end is, I think, shorter than that one, or no, a little bit longer than that one. So it'll be under 100 pounds too. I wonder. Probably almost curl that with one arm. So that's probably maybe that's only like 60 or 75 pounds. So yeah. Anyway, manageable. I can take them down off the wall like that and work on them on the ground, which is a lot easier than trying to work on them, like gouge them out while they're sitting up here, especially these end ones that are sort of precarious hanging on the end. That uh, middle section, I have, I have three of those, I guess, eh? Looks like it's three full, yeah. Three pieces, there'll be three courses that'll be, this configuration where I've got two small ones on the end and one in the middle and then I'll get back into the full length one on top so that center one I can keep adjusting the scaffold making it higher and I can gouge them in place or you know, shape them in place up on the wall uh, I think I'll probably nail a one by or two by on the outside of that probably two of them so that it can't fall off the wall uh, as I'm working on it like just having them balance on these chalks pretty good but you know they could fall over so I don't want to take that chance it's just a well, I wouldn't get hurt it's just a pain to have to hoist that back up again so um, the issue is though because this sticks out almost two inches on both sides it's fine on this one but I can put it up and slide it in but that center one in order to get it out of there now I'd have to <laughs> slide it all the way up off of those these angle irons and then uh, shape it and then lower it back down again like that that's not practical so what I have to do is I don't think yeah I didn't fasten this down it's just the windows holding it so um, uh, what I'm doing is I'll take this window out now and uh, just I'll leave one in I think down there just pull that this way in it there are two inches spin it work on it spin it back in place 
put some moss in there and then drop it in place and then I can, might even take these apart these windows and I'll just keep these uprights um, I can just keep making them level as I fit each log and then I'll fit this one back into place at the end the window the thing I need to make sure I keep checking is that these are level this way especially as I get higher Right, shape these two and then the get the next I'll move over to where am I next? I guess these two lens. Had a few people asking about the PVs that I use for turning the logs. This is a oh, what do they call it? I guess that's maybe what it's called, Log Ox. That's the company that makes it. Uh, small company from the I think southern eastern southeastern U.S. I forget where they're from, but anyway, they've sent me two of these over the years, and to find them very useful there's a few different ways to use it one is that first of all the other one that's here somewhere that you'll see has the extension on it so a bar that goes from here and then takes it up maybe doubles the length of it that gives me extra leverage so it's easier to turn a log or to uh, move a log around and i take that off when i'm I'm not basically I'm leaving one off almost all the time um, so that I can lift logs so I really like this handle being at 90 degrees to it or a traditional PV and I've got two or three of them two or three of them that are just uh, straight wood handles and they're good for for uh, rolling logs but not so good for picking up first of all there's no handle like this 90 degree hang handles so you're trying to pull something without sliding and then the other thing is if it does let go it's more apt to come up and hit you. So this handle gives me more control, especially with it being short like this. Um, the other ex the other accessory that I don't use very often unless I'm actually cutting firewood, it has a little foot or a sort of a fulcrum or a lever that comes off here, off the back of it, like a T. And then when you're rolling a log like like say this for example it comes out here so that would be up it would be against the ground so when you roll that it ends up flipping the log up the height of that off the ground which is useful if you're if you're cutting firewood or cutting a length off that log you want it suspended so that the saw doesn't bind if a log's sitting like this like this is a good example actually if i was to cut that um, with a chainsaw or with a, a handsaw down straight through it then what would happen is that as I got close to the bottom this log would buckle and this upper gap would close as it as this drops this comes tighter like this and pinches the saw um, so what this does if this was on the ground for example I'd put it on here flip it up so that it's sitting up on this little jack off the ground and then that would take the weight off the two ends so that when I cut through the log instead of coming together like this ends up falling like this and the gap opens so that the saw can pass right through and doesn't bind. So yeah I like it. I don't know I've talked about it probably right in the beginning when I got it but you have seen me use this thing for it's got to be three years now. I'm happy with it so check them out anyway log ox uh, logox.com. I'll put a link in the description. I don't get anything out of it. Just I'm thankful that they sent me this tool and a couple of log carriers as well.